Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is S.S. Rajan, uh, a senior faculty associate professor with Tamil University. I have been here for the last six months. Uh, previously, I have been vice principal at Oral Institute of Nautical Science at Madurai. Okay. My home is in Madras, so that's the reason why I have made a shift, a radical shift from Madurai to the Madras. So, okay. Now, today's topic is going to be about the tide docking on the, about the tail shop or the propeller shop, what is the center, what is the purpose of the dry dock, what are the typical failures that you, that you will expect, that you can expect on the, the tail shop. So these are some of the things we will be dealing with today on how, this, how the oil in the strand tube is contained. All those things we will discuss today one by one for the next half an hour, 20 to 25 to half an hour, whatever uh, we can Whatever we can grasp, we will project it on the slides where it is possible. Okay. So first of all, dry dock of a ship is nothing but very similar to a car going to petrol pump station for under chassis, under chassis, shading and then painting it with the anti-rust coat of paint. Same thing we do for the ship. Every two and a half years, the ship is supposed to dry dock. In a period of five years, she is supposed to dry dock for she has complete two dry docking. Supposing you do the first dry docking after three years, we cannot avoid dry docking the ship after the two years, next two years is elapsed. So in, within the five, the five years period, we have to complete the dry docking operation of the ship. The main reason behind is that the ship is sailing in a very unfriendly environment, that is the sea water, and ships, because it's made of iron, it is liable to corrode and weaken the, the hull structure that is which is made predominantly of steel. So therefore the reason is that we take the ship to the dry dock, then we pump out the water in the dry dock bottom and we do the underwater painting of the underwater painting of the ship with the anterior painting and that paint should be environmentally friendly. Earlier days, there used to be a paint called CFC paint, which used to release some toxic gases like chlorine to kill the, the fungus, uh, fungus uh, material, fungus uh, living organism on the paint hull, on the ship's hull, which could increase the resistance of the ship and increase thereby the fuel consumption. So that is the reason why now because we are over so conscious of the environmental condition, we have banned this kind of paint which is based on TFC, that is tetrafluorochloride paint, which is today we don't use these paints anymore, it is totally banned. So we will be using only a paint which is eco-friendly and the, each of these paints, they are patented and the paint manufacturers will not disclose the formula of this particular paint. So let us look at the what is the the dry docking phase can be divided into three phases. One is the field of preparation, the second thing is the during the dry docking, what all things will be done, and finally, after the post docking, what all things need to be checked and inspected before the ship is out of the dry dock and proceeds on the next way for the next lift of cargo. So, here, what are the things that are examined and the dry dock? Before the ship enters the dry dock, we, may, we should have sufficient information about the underwater structure of the ship. That means the key, stern, front frame, stern door, rudder, outside, hull plates, etc. We should have a proper drawing, proper drawing. All these things are listed in a listed in drawing for the hull plan or a shell expansion plan which indicate the position of each of these items that is mentioned here, that is the keel, the stern, front frame, front pole, rudder, the shop axis, the shop opening on the center, etc. will be, uh, will be uh, drawn on your ship shell expansion plan. Okay. Also, examine in the red of you see, your, the, the propeller and the sea chest, the sea chest walls on the trainers, and all the underwater fittings. Underwater fittings means, for example, the ship, since made of iron structure, 
we should not corrode. In the sea water environment, therefore, we have something called anodes, something called anodes, which is made predominant, predominantly of aluminium or zinc. Today, uh, certain ports, like uh, certain ports, certain countries in the United States, they are prohibiting the use of zinc anodes. So, therefore, such, in such kind of countries, in order to avoid fines, most of the owners and ship operators in during the dry period, they replace the zinc anodes with the aluminum anode, especially aluminum anodes fitted to the, the rudder pole and the, the propeller boss on the other side, the outside side too. <coughs> now, let us see what is sent to. So this is what the picture of a dialogue, uh, this is called a rival dialogue. Where you can see the ship is sitting on, sitting on the, uh, into the point of the I like to do that again. You see, uh, before entering the radar, perfect conditions will have been fulfilled. First thing is that the ship should be as light as possible. The ship should be as light as possible with minimum bala, minimum bunker fuel oil, minimum blue oil, and minimum waste. All the uh, movable way should be fastened on secure, should not move while the ship is sitting on the block. So once you are taking care of this, the, before the ship sits on the block, you must pay attention to severity of the ship. Severity of the ship is more the domain of the, the navigating officer. They will take care of this. But also, also along the dock master, they will make sure that they, the ship is turned by the turn so the first portion of the ship that will touch the bottom on the keel block will be the, the off portion of the ship. Then it will gradually sit all along the length along the blocks, along the blocks. The blocks are in three types, inner block, outer block and the, the keel blocks, keel blocks. Okay. So the moment the ship is resting on the, uh, resting on the uh, blocks, the first operation that will be done by the dockyard people in the will be washing of the hull with the high pressure water and they will try to remove maximum amount of the fungal growth and the sea growth that is stretching to the ship hull. Okay. So, one must realize that in the dialogue, once the water is pumped out of the hull, the pump out of the uh, docking, you don't have any more sea water for the running your generator or running your fire pumps. So, therefore, the first thing you should line up is that you must be, take care of your own ship, so your fire main should be connected to the shore fire, fire main supply. And not only that, during the stay of the ship, inside the radio, you have no AC or fish to therefore, because cooling water is not there, so you must have a shore supply of sea water for provide cooling, provide cooling for your permission compressor and your AC compressor. That is one thing. And today, one of the things that is required here is that they are done away with most of the anodes on the uh, ship's hull. In short, what they want for most of the modern ship, they want for a system called ICCP. ICCP, expansion for ICCP, nothing but it is impressed current cathodic protection system. Impressed current cathodic protection system. Okay. Along with the impressed cathodic, uh, impressed current cathodic protection system, you also have the same control panel something called MGPS system, MGPS system. MGPS system is nothing but it is marine growth protection system. So both these systems, they have a pair of anodes made made of a copper and aluminum, a silver combination in, uh, fitted to the ship's hull and fitted to the sea chest, fitted to the sea chest. So these are supplied by electric current. So this current should be switched off before the water is Pumped out of the diver, or before the ship is entering the diver, the current, the first current system and the GPS system should be switched off. Okay. And leave all the valves in the sea valve system open so that water will drain from the ship's tanks inside the ship. It's the tide of bottom. Then after the strand tube, the, the gap between the propeller box and the strand tube is covered by a contraction cord. The rope guard. This rope guard is the first thing that is removed in the propeller, above or outside the propeller, so that the propeller bar and the propeller base surface condition can be examined along with the control.
condition of the rudder which is off the propeller. Okay. Check the three water leaks from the wells, the bearing portions are tightly set on the hull portion of the ship, that is outside the ship. After setting up the plugs, an octopede dock has knocked out, the ship side and bottom need to be cleaned and washed down with high pressure water. Before you use power, when the ship generates power is still available, you must lower the anchor and the chain cable chain to be to the dock bottom so that they can be weighed and then calibrated for calibrated for the where of the, the, the cable links. Okay. If the weight rate is more than 10%, each of this cable link should be replaced, replaced. Because we don't have to have a situation where you lose the anchor chain because we are not taking proper care of the chain link in the red off. Here we have omitted the inspection of the chain link and it has become mandatory that in red off you must drain the anchor cable and over a sample, you take few samples of the umbrella uh, tackle over, over a chain gun and measure the thickness of each of the shackle link, shackle the link, and if the weight is more than 7 to 10 percent, it is prudent to prudent to replace this link because for the next five years you are not going to do this operation. Okay. It is, it is safer to spend money on the driver to replace the link rather than Facing a situation where you lost the anchor of the anchor in the sea. Okay. Now, another important job that is required is the ship side gratings on the sea chest will be removed and inside it will be free from all the marine clothes with high pressure water and it will be repainted with an anti rust coating and it will be kept open before assembly for the surveyor to inspect the, the features ratings and then it will be closed back. Similarly, not a survey item to be carried out, especially the hull portion, as well as the propeller boss, the propeller, sh uh, propeller shop on the table portion, they will be carrying a test for the magnetic leak test, magnetic crack detection test, where you will spread the magnetic particles and wherever the surface effect is there, the magnetic particle orientation will change. So that will indicate that there is a discontinuity in the surface of the texture of the propeller dust, which will be examined. Okay. Now, another thing that is important is the rudder will be disbanded and the rudder is supported on the uh, pectoral bit. They are turning on the pectoral bushes. Uh, the bushes, pectoral bushes, they should be examined for where are replaced if the marginal, marginal allowance is crossed. The tail shot bearing on the similar way, the first thing, what they do to the tail shot bearing to measure the wear, propeller drop or wear out of the propeller uh, shot bushes, which is called the propeller drop, they use a poker gauge. They simply remove the cap on the stern tube off seal and put a poker gauge and they will contact with the, the propeller shot and they take a reading and compare it with the previous reading that was taken with the previous trade off. The difference between the two readings will be giving you the, the drop in the propeller because of the wear out of the off bearing of the tail shock or the propeller shock. The chain is examined as I mentioned and they are marked and calibrated and the report is given to you by the, the trade off people. Okay. Now, what is the responsibility of the ship stock? See, first of all, the ship's engineer and the ship's crew should realize that dead off is not a holiday for the ship's crew, where the, all the jobs will be done by the, the shore people. That is not the case. For economical reason, 50% of the job will be handled only by the ship's stop. Only those jobs which the ship's stop cannot handle, like outside hull maintenance, the inside major works will be done by the shipyard people, but small smaller things which is within the capacity of the ship crew to handle that will be done only by the ship stop. But as you know, uh, ship stop in the engineering department is very very less and predominance goes to the, the ship stop engineers to supervise what the dialogue people are doing. It is the last minute 
and everything is assembled, we don't have much time to carry out examination. Okay, that time there is no point in uh, crying that this thing has not been done properly. What were you doing when the repair was going on? You should have pointed out to pointed out that time. That is all the separate will turn back and tell you. Okay. Yeah. It's being utter confusion because there are too many people who are working in the same place at the same time. Okay. Uh, be careful. Nine room right off. You are under the under the ship repair manager and the the dialogue, ship repair, uh, dialogue safety officer. Any job that you have to do, ship stop, we have to project in the morning meeting that will help it in the help in the help in the your uh, dialogue ship's office where all the dockyard workers and the ships, uh, ship crew will be, especially the chief officer, second officer and uh, master of the ship, chief engineer of the ship, second engineer of the ship and the electrical officer, they will be present during this meeting and they will have to project what are the job they will be doing or the rather the ships will be doing and you should get prior permission from the, the safety officer who will come to the site where you are going to do the job and you certify this area it says you will follow out that area so that no shipyard people will be able to access that place. Okay. Especially in the dry dock, we do cleaning of the bunker tanks, the fuel of settling tank and the fuel of service tank. It should be done only by the, the ship staff. So these areas are called on for the, the shore people so that they don't come into the that area. Of course, once you open the fuel oil tank, the entire unit will smell of fuel oil smell and it may could be uncomfortable for the, the shore people. But then that is something which is required and has to be done and the short people will have to bear. But probably they will stop the working once they finish cleaning all this tank and once they close the manual back, then they will really resume the job. So this you have to take into account that you must have prior permission from ship repair manager whether you can proceed with cleaning the service tank and the settling tank of the heavy oil. Okay. Okay, personal safety is a must. You will wear helmet throughout the, the dry docking period. You will wear the safety boots. And hot work is not permitted in the dry dock for the ship stop unless it is directly required. Directly required. And you must get express permission from the safety officer, safety officer of the shipyard. Apart from this outside uh, job which will be done in dry docking, other jobs that will be undertaken on the ship, especially the machinery part, is that the boilers, which is a very, very important piece of equipment, will be shipped open. All the mountings on the boiler will be opened up and presented for survey, including the safety wall. Safety wall will be overall by the shipyard, but all of the mountings, the main stopper, the boiler gauger, boiler uh, non feed, feed, feed check wall, etc., will be done only by the the ship stop. When the safety wall will be hydraulic pressure tested ashore and brought it back to the ship and then you have to throw the safety wall when the boiler is reassembled with water in the boiler and throw it to the surveyor. Throw it to the surveyor. The surveyor insists on the accumulation test apart from the lifting of the lifting and setting of the safety wall. Okay. Apart from that, your main in field pumps will be sent ashore for recalibration and zero setting of the fuel pumps. Next thing we will also examine is your reversing mechanism of the main engine. And most importantly, the main engine and generator and the steam turbine generator or the steam turbine for the cargo pumps, if at all it is applicable for the ship, the governors are overall sent for overall means brought it back to the ship and recommissioned. So, as I mentioned earlier, in a five year, five year period of time, the dry docking will be two dry dockings. Sometimes we get exceptional circumstances where we can't avoid an extended dry dock, but in that case, in lieu of a dry dock, the survey may allow, or the classification society may allow, 
the inspection of the hull by the ship is afloat by sending divers will be going around the ship and at the, at the nominated places pointed out by the surveyor, they will carry out the thickness gauging, thickness gauging and give you a report. If this report is acceptable to the surveyor and he feels that the ship can, the ship's hull corrosion is not to that extent that it is dangerous, so they can, so they can justify that, that the extension of this radar may be granted. Similarly, the tail shop or the propeller shop will not be withdrawn on the ship every five years or every two years. Normally, it is withdrawn only after every ten years. During interim period, in order to in order to ensure that the tail shop survey can be extended to ten years, the survey will ensure that you make on a yearly basis to be presented to you a ten tube log. A ten tube log sheet is nothing but it contains certain parameters which you have to write there. You have to mention what is the extent of the loss of loop oil from the shunt tube, what is the extent of the water content in the blue oil, and what is the frequency of blue oil testing. So all these things should be mentioned in the shunt tube, tube log. And in the survey, it feels it satisfactory, you will extend the, the type of survey for another year. So like this, it will continue like this for the next 10 years. But finally, after 10 years, you cannot, you cannot escape withdrawing the tail shot. The tail shot has to be withdrawn. The chrome liner will have to be replaced. The chrome liner is nothing but it's a, a shrunk fitting onto the tail shot. Tail shot, where, which is riding on the, the lip seal that is sealing the half seal, half seal portion of the shrunk tube on the shot. Okay. The forward seal. Forward of the shaft will not have the chrome nail, only the off portion of the ship will have the this chrome nail and trunk will turn to the shaft, tight shaft. So theoretically speaking, the shaft is not directly in contact with the lip seals in the off the portion of the shaft tube, which is the chrome nail that is in contact with the lip seals. These lip seals, they are made up of beton material, beton material or nitrile rubber, made from nitrile rubber which is held in place by a carcass spring. Okay, there are two types of dialog as I mentioned earlier. One is called gravel dialog, which is for men from men picture. And smaller ship will be having going to dialog, which will be floating dialog. It will be floating dialog. Okay. okay. Here, let's take a look at the Let's take a look at the exact arrangement of shafting. As you can see here, we will start from the propeller shaft. We will start from the propeller shaft. Propeller shaft is a tapered. Uh, taper. Please uh, take a look at this diagram here. here this is a shafting arrangement that is shown to you. As you can see, let us proceed from the, the upper end. To start with, we see the propeller mounted on the propeller box. The propeller box bars is Resting on the, the taper shaft or the tail shaft. The tail shaft is supported in the stern tube by means of two bearings. One off the bearing which is dark green, dark green color and forward bearing which is hatched. So the tail shaft is supported in the stern tube by means of off the bearing which is called off the bush and forward bearing which is called the, called the forward bush. In between the gap that is found this, the space is filled up with blue oil. This blue oil supply is coming from a gravity tank. From a gravity tank. The gravity tank will be above, above the water line, above the water line, maybe one or two meters, five meters above the water line. Roughly, as I guess you can say, it's five meters above the loaded water line. So upper upper gravity tank we will not use when the ship is loaded condition on the lower gravity tank. When the ship is in ballast condition, you should use the lower gravity tank for the lubrication of the stern tube. That is, the oil that is coming to this, the empty space that is found between the forward boot and the off boot. <coughs> apart from that, apart from that, we have two seals. One is called the off seal, another one is called the forward seal. The forward seal will have its own gravity tank, and the off seal will have its own gravity tank. Now, the ingress of water into the 
of C, in case of C gets damaged, is a clear indication that the water, sea water, if it overcomes the resistance of the off seal, will start filling up the oil space in the off seal, off seal tube and keep on overflowing the oil that is in the off seal tank. So that is the indication that the off seal is, off seal is gone. As a backup fuel, one more seal, if that seal also goes, then you can expect the, the sea water to get into the frontal blue oil system. So that is a dangerous situation. The indication, the first seal, uh, that is itself the indication that you will have to, you cannot work on the dry anymore. You, can't, you cannot work on the dry docking anymore. You may have to plan for the next dry dock. Inform your company that you are part of getting water in off seal time and how water is uh, continuous pouring out from the added time of the off seal time. Because no oil, oil is not staying there. It is coming out continuously. So that is the indication that the off seal is no more, no longer intact. And you can expect a situation where oil can enter into the central lubrication system and damage the, the uh, exposed port portion of the shop which is not fitted with the chrome liner. So after the test shop, the test shop is connected to the intermediate shop which itself is resting on a number of bearings. Okay. The number of intermediate shop depends on the length of the ship, length of the ship. Usually, most of the ships today, they have off accommodation, off engine room. So you may find only one or two intermediate shops resting on two or four support bearings called intermediate short bearings. What they, you know, technically it's called a plumber block or a palliator bearing, palliator bearing. After the intermediate shop is finally connected to an independent thrust shop. In the thrust shop, you can see the shop, at the bottom of the thrust shop, we have a collar. The collar will absorb the thrust in the power direction as well as in the off direction. You can see the two sets of thrust pads. One is the off thrust pad, another is power thrust pad. Power thrust pad will take the thrust and the engine is rotating in all the ice direction. And the engine is running in reverse direction, the off the thrust pad will take the absorb the thrust. But under no circumstances, the axial thrust or the movement of the, the shafting system in the head direction should be taken up by the engine crankshaft. It should be absorbed in the thrust pad, thrust shaft and thrust pad system, thrust block system. Okay. The thrust shaft is connected to the, the uh, connected to the main engine crankshaft through a flywheel, through a flywheel or it is connected to connected to gearbox of the, the gearbox of the gear, uh, medium plate engine or the same turbine. So that is the shafting arrangement in short. Now sometimes you may find on a ship the intermediate shop bearing will not have a top bearing, it will have only bottom and bearing because the role of the intermediate shop bearing is only to take the weight of the weight of the shop. Is not the bottom bearing, upper bearing has got no rule at all, no rule at all in supporting the shop. It's only the bottom bearing that is going to support the shop weight, intermediate top weight. So you will not find the upper half of the bearing. Only the upper half will have only the cover, only the cover. Okay. Whereas the first shaft will have axe journal bearing on both the sides apart from the axial thrust bearing, which is going to absorb the, the thrust, axial thrust. And most of the couplings, coupling bolts are fitted by fitted bolts, fitted bolts. So, so how is transmitted from main infraction? To the, through the flywheel to the uh, first shop, from the first shop to the intermediate shop, from the intermediate shop to the, the tail shop. So progressively, the power developed by the engine will be producing according to the, the friction that is the friction that is present in the, each of these bearings. Okay? So the shaft power will be different from the indicated power of the main engine. So this is the front tube lubricant system as you can see here. This is the gravity tank and the gravity tank will supply lube on the front tube between the two front tube bearings and the oil will drain back to a tank called the return tank. From the return tank oil will pump back to the, the front tube lube oil pump and keep maintain a steady gravity head, steady head of 
Shaggy head in the gravity plank. And that head, available head to from the shaft shunter line up to the four floor level in the gravity plank is head pressure that is available to overcome the resistance of the drop pressure. The drop pressure will be more during load condition and drop pressure will be less during the ballast condition. So therefore, most of the ship, bigger ship, you will find which is the one gravity tank I have shown here in this set, will have one more gravity tank, upper gravity tank and the lower gravity tank. So this gravity tank, we have to change according to the what is the outside drop, outside drop of the ship. So let us look at some of the So, as you can see in the shaft lift system, this portion is called the off seal arrangement and this portion is called the forward seal arrangement. As you can see here, the stud tube is supported between the off peak bulkhead, the engine off bulkhead and the stern frame. This is the stern frame, this is the stern frame. Okay. And as you can see, the off stern tube seal is having plugs. We have to remove this plug and pass through the depot for gear to, main, to measure to what extent the shaft is come down to the wear out on the half bearing book, half bearing book. So that is called a propeller drop, which is nothing but it is a measurement of the extent to which we have propelled the half push has worn down and on the propeller has dropped down. On the same way, you also mentioned, you also, you also have a clearance to measure between Better. How much the rudder has dropped down because of the wear on the first point. Thank you very much. We will continue with this class in the next two sections.